Good morning, Price the Cornerstone. Happy Palm Sunday. Yay. All right, beautiful. Good to see you waving palms out there. Awesome, wonderful. What a glorious, glorious day. A few quick announcements. Uh, this Wednesday night, we'll have our last uh, Lenten Bible study. So for those of you that are attending, we'll be here Wednesday night at 7. Friday will be our Good Friday service. It's very empowering. It's very uplifting and also an opportunity to learn more about Jesus' awesome sacrifice for us all. So that'll be at 7 p.m. Easter sunrise service will be in Gulfport at shelter number 7 at 7 a.m. And then we'll have our Easter worship service here at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday morning. So join us for all of those services. It'll really change you internally and eternally as well. Let us pray. God, we thank you for gathering us in this time and in this place. We thank you, God, that this holy temple is where you live and dwell in these walls and in these people and in us all, God. We thank you for that. We ask a blessing upon everyone who's here this morning, those who are watching on Facebook. May they also receive and feel your love, your, your awesomeness, Lord, and continue to be with us throughout this service, God, as we lift up our praises to you, Lord Jesus, for coming into all of our lives to give us eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you stand with us? We're going to sing Hosanna this morning, same thing they were saying when Jesus rode in on the donkey. sing Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you do for us, not only what you did for us on the cross, Lord, but what you do for us every single day, Lord God, that you are with us. Let us feel your presence this morning. Help us to put aside the things that we, the baggage that we carry around, Lord, the things that are on our mind that are not you. Lord, just help us to put them all aside and just be in that place. Be present with you this morning and just feel your presence lord god fill us with your holy spirit we pray in jesus name thank you lord you may be seated
you this morning. Lord God, we give you all that we have. Lord God, whatever that might be, our time, our energy, our resources, Lord God. Father, I pray that you would help us just to dig deep this morning into our souls, find those places that maybe we've closed off to you and just open that door. Let you come in and clean house. Let you come in and just fill us 100%. And Lord, as you fill us, you've promised us an abundance. You've promised us an abundance of your Holy Spirit, of your love that is unconditional. So hard for us to understand that word, unconditional. And Lord God, as you have blessed us, let us show you and honor you. Now, with our tithes and our offerings, Lord God, to be able to carry on the missions of this church and of your church. Lord God, we thank you for this small but mighty church that reaches so many people in this country, in other countries, in our community. We just pray, Lord, that you would take these tithes and these offerings. And as you did, with the fishes and the loaves, Lord, you just multiply it to overflowing. So there's so much, even after we've given every every resource, Lord God, that there's still left over and that you show us where that goes. We just thank you, Lord God, for your incredible love for us. And as we celebrate you and we think, Lord God, soberly about what you did on the cross for us, yet rejoicing of what happened after the cross. What happened at the cross for our resurrection of our souls. And Easter is coming. We thank you so, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for, for just your, your power of your resurrection. We pray, Lord, that you would reach in as you, as you did during the three days, Lord God, and you went down and you grabbed all those people that had been waiting for you, and you took them out. You went down into Abraham's bosom and you just took them out. Lord God, I ask that you would just reach down into the darkest places and pull us out, Lord God. 
Let us be with you today and always. I just thank you, Lord God, and praise you. We thank you for these offerings, Lord God. We ask that you would bless them and, and show us, give us wisdom on where to put them, what to do with them, who to bless. And we just thank you for all your resources and your unconditional love again, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. And you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. Believe it. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a present shaking savior. If you got search for the light of day in the dead of night we've all found ourselves worn out by the same old fight we've all run the things we know just ain't right and there's a better life there's a better life if you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost believe it if you receive my church if you can't feel it somebody testify say amen if you believe it if you receive it if you can't feel it come on somebody testify testify if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it Somebody testify If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker He's a way maker If you want freedom or saving He's a prison shaking savior If you got chains He's a chain breaker If you got pain you lord glory to your name you are worthy of our praises lord lord god just bring forth your word thank you lord for preparing our hearts to hear your word this morning lord plant that seed water us lord god let that seed grow in us lord god and let us flourish and be strong and established in you in jesus name amen we pray today for all who are sick or hospitalized or going through any health issues lord we just ask you to send your healing to all of those. We have prayers for, for those who have suffered a loss. You know those situations, Lord, and we just ask you to, to send your comfort and your peace, Lord. We have praises for all of your blessings and your miracles and your unending love for us. We have prayers for Kelly, who passed unexpectedly, Lord, and prayers for her family and her friends for peace and for acceptance and just let them feel your presence Lord 
Prayers for Pastor Jamie's dad, Lloyd, who will be having open heart surgery. Prayers for her uncle, Don, who will also be having a major surgery. And prayers for the whole family, Lord, for their wisdom and, and peace to feel your presence through this time. And prayers for safe travels for all of the family and friends involved in those situations, Lord. We have prayers for James, that the liver donor will be a match, that tomorrow they are going to, to report to the hospital to see if the blood work will make them a candidate, Lord. We just ask you to watch over that situation, Lord. We have prayers for Grace's stomach. We just ask you to settle that stomach, Lord, and put your hands of healing upon her. And praise for Anne's blood pressure to stabilize. Peace and wisdom for that family. Wisdom for doctors, Lord. For a cousin who is recovering from surgery. And prayers for Dar for a procedure on her heart. Quick recovery. And wisdom for the medical team there, Lord. And prayers, Lord, for Mavis. Lord Jesus, we just pray for Aunt Mavis. We ask, Lord, for a peaceful passing. Lord God, as she is just hanging on and hanging on, Lord God, that you would just give her the, the peace to be able to move on, to let go of this world, and to enter into your presence fully, Lord God, to be able to see you face to face as she has worshipped you her whole life. And we just thank you for all the, the family members that went before her, that she, they would just come and, and, and bring her with them to be in your presence, Lord God. We ask for the family to be in your presence, Lord God, to feel your peace and just be able to be okay with her passing. And we just thank you for her love for you and we thank you that she will be free of pain. Hallelujah. We ask you to be with us, Lord, as we go into the service today. Be with the pastor as she brings your word and just open our hearts to hear that message, yes, Lord. Lord. And let us take away the gifts that you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know where you were last night. But last night, Jesus was at a celebration dinner with Lazarus. Mary and Martha were there, celebrating the fact that Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead earlier this past week. And all the people gathered there around him to see the resurrecting power of Jesus Christ. And then Mary anointed Jesus for his burial. And the word spread all around. Everyone was coming into Jerusalem because it was Passover was soon to be. And they also were hearing about the fact that Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. So many people poured into Jerusalem wondering what was going on and who this was that, that this man of God that had come and done so many miracles showed up. And so the crowds were gathering all throughout Jerusalem. And so Jesus was with the disciples and in Matthew 20, we're going to take the journey with Jesus. Ready to take a journey down the road with Jesus as he enters into Jerusalem. It's the fulfillment of the uh, Old Testament, all the various, various prophecies of who Jesus would be, the Messiah had come. And so he's on his way into Jerusalem to bring eternal life to everyone, as the scriptures you'll see foretold. So in Matthew chapter 20, we'll begin in verse 17. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside privately and told them what was going to happen to him in the upcoming week. Listen, he said, we're going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. They will sentence him to die. Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged with a whip, and crucified. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. 
Then the mother of James and John, sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request, Jesus asked. She replied, in your kingdom, please let my sons sit in the place of honor next to you, one on your right side and one on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? Oh, yes, we replied. We are able. Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. My Father in heaven has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. So just a little backdrop on this. First and foremost, these are the sons, James and John. This is the John that writes the book of John, just in case you needed to know. James, further on, later on in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, he was the very first disciple to be killed. So this was prophecy from Jesus about that. This mother was Sal Salome, which actually she was at the cross of Christ in the upcoming days. Her, her husband, Zebedee, and she also helped provide for Jesus' ministry So they, because they were, they, these were the fishermen that Jesus had called James and John. They were also part of the inner circle. James, John, and Peter saw Jesus transfigured. But what we see here is Jesus is predicting his death. And what we see in James and John and in, and in this woman, which actually she was, Jesus was her nephew, by the way. So they were cousins, just to give you the whole family dynamic here. But what we essentially see is what most of us are like. When God tells us something that's going to transpire, and for Jesus, he had, this is not the first time he predicts his death, very often it all becomes about us, right? <laughs> James and John and mom go to Jesus, figuring they're in the family as well, asking for them to be part of this coming kingdom, to sit at the right and left of him, to be on the top, right up there, right on the top. But the kingdom, sometimes these, these, fair, these uh, uh, disciples often got confused. They thought it would be an earthly kingdom, remember? They're going to overthrow the Roman government. They're going to have a place in history. Jesus is going to be the new king, and everybody's going to get along with everybody, right? Not quite yet. But needless to say, they, the, I see it a little differently, although the fact that you know, they want to be in a high position. Who gets to choose where people are in God's roles and God's realms? God does. So whether you're on top or bottom or in between, all I know is this. All of us can be chosen by God, and that's up to God, right? So it's good to know that you can be chosen, right? You can ask to be chosen, but you may also be told that, hey, guess what? You're going to have a bitter cup to also in part of that that choosing God's kingdom is not like choosing the kingdom of the world. It's not going to be easy, is it? Following Christ is not always easy, is it? No, but it's worth it, right? So what we see here is, you know, Jesus has says, I'm, I'm going to die. Instead of saying something to him like, wow, that's awful. What are you going to go through? Why are you going through that? We want to be there for you. It's, can I be uh, your right-hand person, please? All about me sometimes, is it not? <laughs> when the ten of the disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. But Jesus called them together and said, now see, here's the thing. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, right? He's pretty soon going to be riding a donkey, and we know the story, right? I'm, oh, I gave, gave it away. Uh, but needless to say, <laughs> needless to say, he, every, every time he has an opportunity, Jesus is still teaching along the way, isn't he? He's always ready to teach those disciples things of God. And so he says, he brings them together and he says, you know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. Anybody ever work from anybody above you that's ever done that kind of thing? We don't live in a world today where people are above people and they flaunt it and they lord it over them and they sometimes oppress them. We don't live like that anymore, right? Oh, okay. So you can relate to this, right? what leaders are like sometimes of the world, right? We're not talking about the world. We're talking about a godly kingdom. Remember, the godly kingdom is upside down of the worldly kingdom. It's just the exact opposite. Anyway, 
You know they lorded over people. But among you, he's talking to the disciples. And when he's talking to the disciples, we can also translate it to say that he's talking to all of us. Anytime he's speaking to a disciple, which is a student of God, that also means he's talking to us, right? Anytime you see it in the scriptures, right? Okay, we got that. Among you, it must be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave to work and serve you. For even the Son of Man, who is he speaking of? Himself, the Son of Man, the Son of God, the very most powerful entity that are walking the face of the earth, the most powerful person ever, Son of God, Son of Man, the highest position anyone could ever hold. There's no other name above the name of Jesus, did there? He's the highest, highest possible person that ever lived and still living now, right? He's above everybody and everything, correct? Right? Even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life for a man ransom for all. He's teaching the disciples that we are to do what? Serve. And we are to give up our lives for the benefit of others, right? You want to be a leader? If you want to be a follower of Christ, you want to be a true disciple, you are a servant. Serve others. Serve others. He's teaching those disciples that he came to give up his life for all of us. That's what true godliness is, is caring more about others than ourselves, correct? Amen. As Jesus and the disciples left the town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind. Remember we said earlier, right? They had heard about Jesus is coming to town, right? And so a large crowd begins to form and follow behind him. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. When they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began shouting. Anybody here ever need Jesus coming your way? Anybody here need something from Jesus this morning? For you or someone else? What do you need to start doing? Shouting. Calling them by name. Using his name, the name above all names, the power that resurrects the dead, the power that heals the sick, the power that brings death to life again, the power that heals the blind, the lame, and all the others that he ever touched, the lepers. Every person was healed by Jesus that came in, into his presence. So these two blind men by the side of the road, and in the book of Mark, it, talk, it gives a, one of them a name, Bartimaeus, who is lying by the side of the road with them. And they all begin to shout, and here's what they shout. Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And what does the crowd do? They start to pray. They start to get around these folks and go, yay, all right, Jesus is coming. And these, two, these blind people that are here, they're going to get healed. Let's watch and see what happens. What happens with the crowd? You got to keep reading the scriptures, unfortunately. Be quiet. The crowd yells, be quiet. Don't make a ruckus. Quietly sit there in misery yourselves. Don't shout out that you need help from Jesus. Don't, don't, cause, don't cause a ripple effect in the church ever. If you need something from God, just keep it to yourself. Wrong teaching, right? The crowd shouted the wrong thing. The crowd yelled at them. But here's what these folks do. They want healing. How many of you want real, true healing long term? Freedom of all kinds of things, right? Not just physical healing. I know, we, I know we, God can heal all the, the physical things, but the spiritual things in us, the darkness in us, the pain in us, the past in us, the torment in us, the guilt in us, the shame in us, that's what we all need healing of the most, do we not? What other people believe about us, then we take it as truth, and we discredit ourselves or diminish ourselves, right? Right? We don't feel good enough, wanted, or all those other things that all of us humans sometimes suffer from, right? Especially when we know we're sinners, right? You ever made a mistake? Yes, of course. And so we all have that thing in us that we sometimes shame ourselves, right? And here's what they do. When they only shouted louder. Louder. 
Sometimes you have to shout for your healing. Sometimes you have to shout at the enemy, Satan, and tell him to shut up. Sometimes you have to shout and call on Jesus when you have your direst need, whether you're in a church setting, whether you're at home, when you're in the darkest of night, whether you're in the hospital or in the hospice, or you're in any kind of situation at work or whatever the case might be, when you've been rejected, when someone's left you, when you've lost someone, when you feel as though you're all alone, that's the time to shout, Lord, have mercy. Please help us. Is this world not in need of mercy today? Lord, help us, is what we shout out, right? It's not the time to be quiet when you're in a, in a place of need. That's why we have cell phones and texts and Facebook and all those kind of things that you can shout out to God and shout out to us those, of us, those of us that will help pray for you and with you, right? You don't have to keep things to yourself. Just telling you. Verse 32, when Jesus heard them, he stopped. Wait a minute. He's on this triumphant, he's getting ready to get the donkey. He's ready to go into Jerusalem and ride the donkey. He's getting ready to be praised with palms and garments thrown at him, and he's ready to, just, he's ready to go into Jerusalem as a triumphal entry. What does he do on the way? He stops. No matter what's going on in our world today, no matter what's going on in your life, my life, all of our lives, when we are in need, no matter what Jesus is on the way to go do, you see it throughout his ministry, and you're seeing it right here, right now, in this chronological order. He puts aside where he's going, and he stops to minister to whoever is in need in that very moment. For example, if some of you are in need this morning, if, you, if we need to stop our service and pray for you, we'll do that. The sermon can go on later and later and later and later. I mean, I mean, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Sometimes all of us are so busy going places, doing things. We've got to-do lists and all that other stuff, right? We've got to get ready to do whatever we're doing, especially when it comes to worshiping God. And we, you know, we've got to get out of here at a certain time because we've got other places to go, right? But what about in the middle of things? The example we see of Jesus, yes, he's on the way to Jerusalem to save all of humanity once and for all, right? But along the way, he stops because he hears somebody saying, Lord, have mercy on me. And then he, in Mark, he calls out Bartimaeus, and he says, come over here. And Bartimaeus throws off his cloak and runs to Jesus. That's the kind of reaction all of us need when we are in need. Meaning, when you are in need, you call out to God, right? And sit and wait and know that he, he's going to stop everything. The planets are going to keep moving. He's, all, he can do, he's multitasking. But needless to say, he's going to stop along the way and meet your very need. That's how important one person is to Jesus Christ. I want you to get that this morning. He stops and he says, what do you want me to do for you? Kind of a weird question, wouldn't you say? You see blind people standing in front of you. But maybe he's asking, maybe they need more than spiritual I'm sorry, physical eyes, right? Maybe they need another type of healing too. See, the thing about Jesus is he always asks us what we want him to do for us. Some of us might say, I want to be forgiven. I want my pain to go away. I want my sorrow to end. I want to be loved, right? Whatever the question is that we asked, he always asks us, what do you want me to do for you? And guess what? Will he do the opposite? <laughs> Will he say, no, I'm not going to, no, 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 just ask for something else. Ask for something easier. Ask for, ask for something that maybe you think you deserve. Most many of us do, right? <sighs> what do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, we want to see. Okay, they named it. Jesus felt sorry for them. He felt compassion. He felt empathy for them. And he touched their eyes. If it was their heart that was broken, he touched their heart. 
If it was their mind that was broken, he touched their mind, right? He's a toucher. You ever get that about Jesus? He's a toucher. He's a huggy guy. He's sweet. He's, he's not some far-off, distant God that we have to just bow down to and, and grovel at. He wants to touch us. He touched the lepers, right? Most of us need a touch from God, do we not? Yes. So he touched their eyes. Instantly they can see. Then they followed him. Where are they headed? As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, we're starting to get a little bit bigger crowd going on, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Lazarus, Mary, and Martha are in the crowd already, right? Right? Imagine that. Lazarus walking with Jesus to go into Jerusalem and show everybody he's alive. <laughs> cool. Don't we need to show people we're alive in Christ, that our life is different now, right? As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into the village over there, and as soon as you enter it, you'll see a donkey tied there with a colt beside it. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt, Zechariah 9.9. 9. The reason he was riding on a donkey's colt is a king. Whenever a king wanted a donkey, it, the king of that place could go into any town and say, I need that donkey, and the people would give it to him. It was a form of submission to that king. The fact that a king would ride a colt, in other words, no one else would ever be able to ride that donkey except for the king. So we see that Jesus is coming into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, but also because he's the king of all kings. You see how that's fitting together? And in Zechariah 9, 9, I want, want to add two more scriptures to that because the story goes on and just this is fulfillment on the donkey story. But I want to add more to this because it says in verse, it says, hear what it says. I will remove the battle chariots and the war horses from Jerusalem. I will destroy all the weapons used in battle and your king will bring peace to the nations. See, the thing about a donkey is they represent peace and humility. Guess who Jesus is? The prince and king of peace, correct? Yes. He's bringing peace to Jerusalem, peace with humanity. His realm will stretch from sea to sea and to the ends of the earth. Verse 11, because of the covenant I made with you, Sealed with blood. That hasn't happened yet, has it? But it's going to on Friday. Do you see how this also correlates to what's going on in this week out of the book of Zechariah? I will free your prisoners from death in a waterless dungeon. Come back to the place of safety, all you prisoners who need hope. That's Jesus right there in the book of Zechariah. Verse 11 and 12. The new covenant's coming. The covenant of peace. The covenant of forgiveness. The new covenant. The new wine. The new way. Exciting. I'm excited. Sorry. Go ahead. Moving right along. <laughs> Matthew. Back to Matthew. I'll keep going with the story because the story marches on, as you well know. All right. Where am I? Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. We'll get back to it. There it is. Boom. All right. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut from branches from the trees, palms they took down and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God, the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. Hosanna, which means save us now. Should we not be shouting save us now in this world today? Save us from everything that's happening around our world today, yes? 
Do we still not need Jesus to parade in here with us today? Of course we do. Of course we do. And the entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked. And the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. He's more than the prophet from Galilee, isn't he? He's more than the prophet. He's the Savior. He's the Messiah coming. Because all the Old Testament, if you go back to Isaiah 61, if you go back to Isaiah 58, if you go, if you go back to Ezekiel uh, 586 B.C., when the, uh, Jerusalem was given over to Babylon and Jerusalem was destroyed, God took his glory out of the temple in Ezekiel because of the way the, way the people were. Guess what's coming back into the temple? Because watch what happens. Jesus entered the temple, drove out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. He said, the scriptures declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer but you've turned it into a den of thieves. Verse 14, the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. The party went on, did it not? The leading priests and the teachers of religious law and and saw all these wonderful miracles and heard even the children in the temple shouting, praise God for the son of David. That was a pretty good day in the temple, wasn't it? And guess what came back into the temple that day? The glory of God came back into that temple because Jesus entered it. As the scriptures always predicted, he'll come back into Jerusalem and into the temple and gather his people around him. And what does he do when he's in the temple? He gets rid of the people that were cheating people that were in that very temple hurting them, harming them, right? He got rid of all those hypocritical leaders that were there that were not servants, but they were takers, right? What's he do with them? He says, out of my house. And he brings peace and he brings healing. And he begins, guess look what he does. He takes the blind. Oh, there's more blind people around? God, this place, there's a lot of blind people around. But not not just physically blind, remember? Not just physically blind, spiritually blind. All these rules and regulations and all the things that were happening in that temple, buying and selling of of sacrifices that didn't mean anything, worshiping God in a in the weirdest ways possible, not in with their hearts whatsoever. He wanted fasting of their hearts and giving right. But what does Jesus do when he gets to the temple after this glorious ride? He heals more people. He just can't help himself. The best day of his life, maybe. Oh, maybe not. Well, maybe it is. Because he came. Why? Isaiah 61 says, and in Luke 4 it says, I came to heal the blind, give the lame to see, to speak to those who are oppressed and set them free. I came to give them life and give them to the fullness. He was fulfilling every prophecy that was ever written about in all of the Old Testament prophecies. What did he come for? For us, right? He came to change us, save us, help us, right? So it's Palm Sunday. We always bring palms in here. What's the palms got to do with anything? When you, if you go in the book of Revelation, one more place, I got to keep preaching on this, I'm sorry, but needless to say, Revelation chapter 7. After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation, tribe, and people of all languages, standing in front of the throne before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And they shouted with a great roar, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb, Jesus himself. That's what's happening in the, while, uh, uh, the second, wow. I'm, So it's Palm Sunday. And 
we get our palms. And we go home with them. And we give them out to others. We say, oh, happy Palm Sunday. But what does Palm Sunday really mean? What it means is this. The Son of God, the, the Savior of the world, came one day to bring us healing and restoration and resurrection and eternal life. And it happened. And it happened. And he's coming again to bring more people to him when he comes back again. And then there will be no, all nothing but peace. And the lion will lay it on with the lamb. Right? That's the day that's coming. We don't know when. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I go back to the characters that walked along the way with Jesus. This, we always think about this as being Jesus. He was in the center of the procession, and people are waving palms, and they're throwing garments down. Why? Because he was the king. That's what they always did for kings as they rode somewhere. So the people, some of the people were getting it. But more importantly were the people that were also in that parade. Every person Jesus had ever helped and saved and healed were in marching with him. And guess who that is today? That is us. That is us. And when they threw down the garment, that's an outer cloak. It's something that keeps you warm. It keeps you comfortable. It protects you. But they threw it down in front of Jesus in honor of him. But more importantly, it was their old self they threw down. They no longer needed something physical to keep them warm. They had the Savior himself right there amongst them. And all of us need to throw down things in front of Jesus that no longer belong to us, right? The things that we don't need protection from this world because we have Jesus Christ within us, right? So people ask me, what is Palm Sunday? <laughs> well, here's what it is. It's a day of teaching. It's a day of healing. It's a day of shouting. It's a day of praising. It's a day of surrendering. It's a day for us glorifying God and saying, thank you for coming to save my very soul. Jesus Christ changed all of our lives, did he not? But more than that, he's changed our eternity. Not a one of us, not a one of us that believe in him as the Messiah, as the Savior, as the one who died for us and rose from the dead, not a one of us have to fear death anymore or anything else or anybody else for that matter. And in the meantime, he's taught us to be servants. That means we throw away those things in us that take up our time. That means we forgive others because he forgave us. That means we're willing to give up all of our lives for the betterment and better life for somebody else. So I ask this question. Are you a blind person that Jesus gave new sight to, spiritually speaking? Have we all been blind to who we really are in Christ? Have you been told that you're not acceptable to God? Oh, ho, ho, ho. or other people? Yes? Is that a true statement? Absolutely not. See, here's the thing. Jesus didn't stop and get credentials from people to say, well, wait a minute here. Before I heal you, Bartimaeus, tell me about your past. And what kind of person are you? Who do you love? Where have you been? What have you done? If you meet my criteria, I'll heal you. See, that's religion. That ain't Jesus. We have to know who Jesus really is. So this morning, as we wave our palms, some of you can wave them, shouting, shouting for help still. Some of you got some issues still. We haven't cured you totally yet, right? Some of you can just thank God that you're not who you were before you came, and to be, right? <laughs> you ain't what you was, and you ain't what you're going to be either yet, right? But all of us are loved by God. That's a message I want to get most 
importantly across to you. He was a king, yes. He deserves honor and glory, yes. But he was amongst us as a servant. He gave his life for us. He proved to us how much he loves us. What else do you need him to do for you? Anything? What would that be? What do you want him to do for you? All right, there we go. It's okay to shout it out to him. Music is going to come on now. <laughs> and if you need to shout out to God, Lord, save us now. Lord, save me. Help me. Let me walk in the path that you walk. And if nothing else, just imagine being in that crowd that day. All those thankful people, the lepers, the harlots, the prostitutes, the the thieves, the tax collectors, the car salesmen, the, oh, uh, 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 whoa. <laughs> the donkeys, <laughs> right? All of us, all of us imperfect people, guess who gets to go on the, in the parade through that entrance into Jerusalem, into the temple of God. And when Jesus threw out all those other people that were trying to keep people from him, guess who entered in? We did. You did. I did. All of us did. There's no title, there's no label on us that says we cannot enter the temple of God. It's in the book of Isaiah 53. It tells us in 56, anyone can enter the kingdom of God. Anyone. Whoever believes in him shall be saved. Everyone. Anyone. Even you. Even me. Even everyone. I mean, everyone. If that doesn't lift you up today I don't have any more things to say <laughs> glory to God you say but let's give Jesus listen you're you're in the parade with them do you understand that it's cool to know that you are a follower of Christ follow him down the road as all those other people did shouting thank you for saving us thank you for saving us thank you thank you thank you for the life you've given us. Wow. Whoever the sun sets free, it's free indeed. And we're free to worship, free to be healed, free to behold, and free to be loved. Grab it today. Praise God for that today. As Jesus marches in here to this day, throw the garments down. Throw your old life down. Throw down all those things you used to think about yourself and others. And lift up your hands in praise instead. Amen. Glory to his name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. <laughs> Worthy is love and was slain. Holy, holy is he.
Oh, Jesus, you, you are so holy, God. You are so marvelous. And we praise your name for your sacrifice to us, for your love for us, for your wanting to have an intimate relationship with each and every one of us. How humbling. How humbling that we serve a Savior that comes in into our lives peacefully and humbly. You sit at the most high seat and you want to just serve us. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this Palm Sunday to remember how you march into each and every one of our lives peacefully and humbly to save us, to help us, to support us, to grow us, God. In your precious and glorious name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, guys.